negotiations that were taking place before all this. And I think Putin genuinely hoped to do a deal. He put down some demands which were unacceptable to us. We never really made any concessions at all to his demands. The negotiations broke down and this is where we now are. So there's a certain um, unwillingness by the West to recognize how seriously Putin takes this issue, which has brought us to where we are. That said, um, what happens now is it sort of sinks into the fog of war, as far as I can see. Um, people are talking about getting the whole world together in, uh, to oppose Putin, which is obviously unrealistic. The Chinese are making all sorts of ambiguous noises, and the Chinese must actually, in a way, they don't like countries invading other countries, must, in a way, um, be rather welcoming this as a further further pushing the Russians into their arms as the West, and this is very visibly going to happen, lots of sanctions, lots of condemnation, but it's all going to be, you're all going to bounce off Russia's back. I, I've again been saying for some time, the Russian government, Putin in particular, don't take sanctions seriously, um, not because they dismiss the potential economic damage they can do, but because they take Russian national security much more seriously than they take Russian economic welfare. Can he, is there a sense in which he could emerge from this stronger or, or is he inevitably going to, to be weaker because of the sanctions that will be imposed? I mean, could he emerge from this a stronger leader? I, I guess part of his calculation is that he'll fight his war, he'll win it, which he will if it's confined to the Donbass. The West will be outraged and there'll be all sorts of sanctions and stuff, as there were after the siege of Crimea back in 2014. And then the West will begin to forget and want to resume normal business with Russia. And in a few years, we'll be back to where we were before. A, a, a rather good commentator on all of this described the West as having attention deficit disorder with regard to international politics. And I think in a sense, he was right. Uh, but he will, if uh, the Western, Western leaders go ahead with what they say they're going to go ahead with, he will be the leader of, well, I suppose, effectively a pariah state. He will be no, 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 uh, the leader of a country with a pretty severely damaged economy. I'm sorry. A pariah state they will not be. They will be a, a pariah in the Western, among Western countries, which they in fact already are. Uh, but in the wider world, they're still taken really quite seriously. You talk to the Indians or the Chinese, um, Russia for them is a valued partner. And what is going on here in a way is a demonstration of the diminishing clout that the West holds over world affairs compared with where we were actually quite recently, five or 10 years ago. And Putin will have calculated this all in. He will know that, at least for the immediate future, relations with the West will be lousy and will be frozen. But he will also be calculating that in places like the Middle East, China I've mentioned, India I've mentioned, Asia in general, um, Russia, for Russia, Russia will continue essentially with business as usual. So that's interesting. So he's, in your view, chosen his moment quite... I mean, it, it, because of this realignment going on, this global realignment going on with, with China and with India, and he thinks this is his moment to strike, clearly. Well, I, I wouldn't put it that way. I would say that, I mean, the reason that this has happened is because he cannot get, and, and Russia have been trying for this for 20 years, any comprehension in the West of Russia's security concerns. So he feels he's been pushed to doing this let me repeat, deeply illegal, deeply destructive thing. But part of the background to that decision is an awareness that in the rest of the world, there'll be condemnation in the United Nations and elsewhere, but in the rest of the world, Russia is still regarded as a serious power with which countries will continue to want to do serious business. Do serious powers invade independent democratic European states? <laughs> The measure of being a serious power isn't how moral you are, it's how strong you are. And Russia has demonstrated, I'm afraid, um, significant political will and, depending on how the war goes, significant military capacity um, to make itself felt in the world. I'm not defending it. Uh, we thought, we fondly imagined that we no longer lived in a world like that. And I think one of the lessons from these events is that we don't. Yeah, very interesting stuff. Tony Brenton, appreciate your time. Thank you.